But I want to start with this question. What are the benefits of intentional, regular one-on-one -on -one conversations versus come see me whenever you need me open door policy? Time. Okay, one is you, you all acknowledge that open door policy can feel less focused, yeah. especially for you, the person who's being interrupted. Right? So both people have the ability to focus. There's one. We're gonna list a bunch of what, what are other benefits besides focus? Sorry, again? Forced communication. Yeah, that's a lovely way of putting it, but no, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> you will intentional. communicate. It's intentional. intentional. <laughs> that's what I, mean. I know that's what you meant. No, but, but actually, the spirit of what you're saying is absolutely true because here's the problem with here's the problem with open policy. Can we agree that not everybody will use it when they should have? Yeah. And can we also agree we might have frequent buyers that don't need to use it quite so much? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right. So here's the one thing that we get with these regular one on ones. Even not playing field, right? You're going to actually find that middle place where you're going to be able to um, maybe have a little less of the frequent flyer, maybe have a more of the person who's trying to avoid you. Uh, it is forced in a sense, right? Meaning it's required. When you look at what's going on out in the real world with management. These uh, regular one-on-ones are probably your most important management tool. <coughs> um, there's more. Other benefits to one-on-ones versus come see me and everything. Right else. structure. I mean, you know, you have a time where you can ask for feedback and yes, yes. In uh, fact, I want you to realize how weird it would be. Let's pretend you just came in to use my open door policy, right? And and by the way, what's the reason most people are using my open door policy? A problem, a problem, uh, need, need some help or whatever. Okay, you kind of use my open door policy. What would be really weird is for you just before you leave the room for me to say, oh, by the way, before you leave, where would you put yourself on the challenge competency continuum? What? <laughs> you know how out of place that is? And so, so open door policy really doesn't give you the chance to ask the kinds of questions that you really should be asking employees. And by the way, the worst time to ask all these questions is around evaluation time. Okay? And so you've got to find a different delivery system for these 15 management skills. Because these 15 management skills, many of them require you to ask really good questions. And that's not going to happen during an open door policy. It's just out of place. Now the second the other thing that gets to, right, uh, what's the reason for open-door policy? It's often a problem. You see how those are going to be more reactive? And open-door policy, uh, sorry, one-on-ones can be more proactive. Right? So there's another difference. Open-door policy, there's a little bit of a feel to it of, I need you now. And it doesn't mean crisis, right? But I need your help, I need an answer, I need something, whatever it is, which is fine. That's why you don't want to get rid of your open-door policy. But that's not proactive. That's not the place you're going to be digging into proactive stuff. A few more. Benefits of one-on-ones versus open door policy. Intentional connectivity. Intentional connectivity and what goes right with that, who's pursuing who on the open door policy? They're coming to you. They're pursuing you. Right? Who's pursuing who on this? You're, you're pursuing them. Right? Anything else? There's a lot of, the employee feels valued when they know that they're going to yeah, and, and not only are you showing value and respect by spending time with them, your company is showing that we value employees. We are literally requiring managers, and I hate to use that word because some places hate the word require. I don't hate the word require, right? We are, to be a manager in this organization, this is one of the practices you're gonna engage in. You're gonna, you're gonna do these one-on-ones because we value employees. And we value not just employees, we value the relationship between the employee and the manager. And let's add that to our list. I think you already said it, though. Relationship building. Right? I'm not saying open door policy doesn't have some aspect of relationship building. It certainly doesn't have the same vibe. That's one of the ones. So I'm probably, again, preaching to the choir. But before we get into logistics and frequency and all that stuff, I want to spend some time with you on how to make these one-on-one -on -one meetings really effective. How to make them work. So what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about some principles. And the first principle is, what is this meeting about? And we're going to call this, try for a balance here between relationship and task. Try for this task-person balance. And, and here's what we're looking at. I, I actually was um, 
teaching this class years ago, and I was mentioning one-on-ones, and before we even got into it, before we even got this far, this one woman in class goes, oh, I've been doing one-on-ones for years, they're great, and I thought to myself, oh, good, you know, I have a fan, and she's going to support what I'm saying, so I turned to her, and I go, good, hey, tell us about your one-on-ones, and she goes, okay, they're eight minutes long, and immediately I just thought, that's just weird. I mean, not even ten, I mean, eight minutes long is just weird, and so I said, okay, what do you do in your eight minutes? And she goes, well, we go over their task list. All right, that's not, that's not a, what we're talking about, right? If you, if you need to have that conversation with your people anyways, to have it, right? If you need to have a weekly task checkoff list or a daily thing or, I don't care, go for it. That's part of your air traffic control. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's not this, right? That's not this. Now, there could be some aspect of task in these conversations for sure, right? But that's not what it is. It's both. In fact, here's what it is. Recognize this? That's what I'm talking about. Now, do you see some tasky things up there and some relational things up there? That's what we're talking about. We're talking about getting a really good mix. For each of these conversations, let's say you had 10 a year, 12 a year, whatever you have a year, that we're talking about a really good mix. We're talking about trying to do this. And, 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 and don't get me wrong, I don't mean trying to do all of this at once. I, I actually had a guy downtown Seattle, he went to this class, he literally created a checkoff sheet using the top 15 management skills with the intention of bringing it to his one-on-ones and checking off all 15. I can't even imagine how horrible those meetings must have been. Yeah. It's like, how's your wife? Caring and respect, Chuck. <laughs> so, so that's not what we're saying. We're, we're saying that over time, you get to divide this up and, and, and try, to, try to hit the business, right, over time. So that's the first thing. I just want to remind you that what we're talking about is this conversation that's a little bit more of a summit. It's relational. It's checking in. It's the only place, when you stop to think about it, you're going to ever <coughs> You know, again, where would you put yourself on the task or the challenge competency continuum? And where would you like to be? And how can we help you get there? Right? Where else is that going to happen than these one on ones? Any questions first about why, what, what, what these are about? Let's do some skill building. How to ask good questions. And here's where we're going to fix those questions I asked you in the power differential game this morning. Um, two rules to start with in the practice. You're going to avoid closed-ended questions, and you're going to include permission for critique right in the question itself. So we're going to go through these here. You're going to ask close it, you're going to ask open-ended questions, so meaning you're going to avoid closed-ended questions, and you're going to include permission for critique right in your question. Now I am probably going to redefine open-ended and closed-ended questions right now. What's your, what's the working definition of a closed-ended question? Yes or no. It's a question that can be answered with yes or no. I'm going to actually revise that. It is a question that can be answered with one word. And that word might be fine. Okay, you see how those are also closed-ended questions? How am I doing as a manager? Good, bad, <laughs> fine. Those are all closed-ended questions. Okay. How you doing? Fine. That's a closed-ended question. Now, I'm not saying never, ever ask a closed-ended question. That's not what I'm saying. How was your weekend is an absolute fantastic question, right? So don't get too stuck on the black and white version of this. But when you're asking the questions that are about the top 15 management skills, those should be closed-ended questions. Okay. Um, uh, include permission for critique. And we're going to do some practice here in a minute on this. Um, when I asked you those questions this morning, or whenever that was, um, could you tell what I was looking for each time? Mm -hmm. You knew what I was hoping for, right? When I said, how about those manager, what was I hoping for? Good. Thing. I was hoping for at least good, right? Fine would have insulted me, by the way. <laughs> I wanted rock, right? I wanted awesome, right? What did, you, what did I want when I asked you, is there anything I haven't followed up on that you're waiting for? No. I was hoping for no, right? You knew what I'm looking for by the way I asked it and the fact that there's a power differential. So we're going to fix both of those together. Here's how we're going to fix the first one. I asked you, how am I doing as a manager? Close-ended, you know what I'm hoping for. Let's change the question to open-ended and put critique permission right into the question. What would you like to see less of or more of for me as a manager? See how that fixes both of those problems right there? Not only is it now open-ended, the right answer is what? Right, whatever it's a critique. Yeah. The right answer is feedback. 
the way I worded the question says to you that, first of all, you can't give me a one word for that one. And I'm looking for something here, and it's not a compliment. Okay? Let me give you a couple versions of that. What would you like to see less of or more of for me as a manager? Uh, well, in fact, let you do this. Reword that. You use a different phrase for this. How do you ask for feedback as a manager using those rules? Are, things, are there things I can do differently that would uh, better support you in your yeah, you got the second one perfectly, and it's still close-ended, so just, just change that around by putting, get rid of R there, and say what. Start with the question one, try it. Oh, I thought I did, okay. So what 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 things can I yes. do differently? You guys see that difference? Or no? Good, very good. Yeah, so what can I do differently to support you better? How can I help you today? How can I help you? How can I help you more than I have been? What are ways I can help you that I'm not helping you now? Um, if you're wondering how to do the second bullet point, you can almost always start with the word what, and I will just do that for you. So for example, how would you fix this question? Hey, how are staff meetings going? What could go better in staff meetings? What could go better? Somebody else. What would you like to see different in staff meetings? What can I do to make my staff meetings more effective? How would you run staff meetings if you were in my position? They can't, yeah, they're, they can say nothing, right. which, which, by the way, if that's true, awesome, right? I mean, I mean, literally, if they, if I said, hey, what would you like to see less of or more? And somebody said, you know, dude, I really can't think of anything, you're doing really well, I would be fine with that. I mean, that's actually great. If they don't want to answer, I can't fix that magically by asking the question the right way. True? What's going to fix that? Building trust. Trust and respect, right? So, so, so this isn't magic, for sure. This isn't, just by asking it the right way doesn't guarantee you're getting a good response. But I tell you what, it's way more likely that if you look like you're asking because someone told you to ask, but you're asking close-ended, and you're you know, not including permission, it's not very effective. Hey, how am I doing as manager? That's really hard to answer that question because of the power differential. What am I supposed to say? Shitty, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, and it's hard. It's hard to answer that in any way that even feels constructive. Good. Uh, fix the third one. I asked you, um, is there anything you're waiting on me for? Anything I haven't followed up on? How'd you fix that? What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on for me? What are you waiting on for me? Now, doesn't, do, you, do you also hear the humility of these questions? When I say, what are you waiting on from me? What, I, what, I, what haven't I gotten back to you on? What am I implying? That you know you have something. I'm human. But it's very likely that I haven't. Remember, right? See, there's a humility thrown right into these questions. Does this all make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. You're going to practice these in a little bit at your group, but these are these are taking these top 15 management skills and other things and finding a way to really ask. And again, that's not going to be happening in your you know, open door policy. Ask what else? Who can I pick on? Kim, can you do a role play with me? Hey, Kim. Um, I just wanted to ask you. Um, What's something you'd like to see less of or more of for me as a manager? I wish you followed up more on this. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so she answers my question. We're done. You see how that might feel like? What's the other shoe going to be now? You feel the fear that might happen there? She has no idea how it took that. She doesn't know if I'm, you know, what I didn't say, which I should have, was what? Thank you, Anne. Well, good. Let me write that down. What else? You see how inviting that is? What else is the opposite of those, sort of those creative questions? What's one thing you'd like to see? Really? I can think of 12. I have to come up with one. <laughs> um, what else? It might seem like a subtle thing, but what you're saying to that employee is, that first thing you just said to me is, is acceptable. I got it. It doesn't blow me away. I'm not upset. And there's probably more. So this is just invitation. Ask for more. Um, try to avoid the um, guess what's in my head questions. These are the overly rhetorical. Um, now, what could you have done differently, Cheryl, in that situation? I mean, sometimes there's even a tone that comes with it. Right? I, I already have the answer in my head, and let's see if you can get it. When there's power differential, that actually is even scary. Okay, I don't know what she wants to hear. Obviously, she's fishing for something in particular, right? So watch out That's for this. Um, do you ask perfect world questions? These can help with creativity. Hey, if we had all the money in the world, what would you like us to see training-wise? Um, if we had all the time in the world and money, you know, what would you like to see here? 
Um, just, just as a way of saying, um, sky's the limit right now, we're being creative. There's not a right or wrong answer here. <coughs> just an inch for you. Um, some other thoughts. Uh, don't play whack-a-mole. Uh, this is the conversational ski shooting kind of thing. Um, instead of being open and doing some of that brainstorming mode where they get to share what they want to share, and we start evaluating things bit by bit, piece by piece. I was actually watching this conversation. It was a little dis distressing. Um, a director had tasked the manager with improving morale in her department. And then we were having this meeting, and the director said to the manager, so what are your ideas now that you've had some time to think about this for improving morale? And the manager said, well, hey, I'm thinking about doing blah, blah, blah. The director, oh, the director said, oh, no, we can't do that because of this. And then the manager said, well, OK, I'm thinking about doing, oh, no, we can't do that because that's not the budget. OK, well, then I'm thinking about doing, oh, no, we tried that about five years ago. That didn't. I mean, by the, th by the fourth thing, that poor manager, you could just see her deflating like a balloon. It was just like her discouragement was showing up. And it was like, I just wanted to say, shut up. Shut up. Let her share and let her brainstorm. And, you know, and so just, don't, just again, we're, we're, there's a power differential issue there, right? When we feel like we have to have a response. I'm, I'm going quickly because we've got a lot to do this afternoon. Um, consider preloading some of your questions. And, and then here's a preview um, for day two. Half of you, if you're representative of the general population out there, half of you are what we call processors. And half of you are what we call expedients. And you probably know this from the work you've done in the past. But one of the differences between expedients and processors is this. Processors tend to think to talk. And expedients tend to talk to think. You recognize the difference there? Which one do you think you are? Can you, can you identify that? You either tend to process to talk, or you talk to think. That's how you process, right? If you're not sure which one you are, and you're partnered up with someone in life right now, you're most likely the opposite of them. Okay? So here's how it works in our family. I'm the talk to think. Like, I, I have to talk it out to process it. My wife is the processor. She has to process it alone first, and then she can talk to me. So in our first five years of marriage, when we're having an argument, I'm chasing her around the house trying to get her to talk to me so I can process. And I found out early in our marriage, apparently she can't process while being chased. I guess <laughs> <laughs> she's got to be alone, and then she can process, and then she can talk to me. And the reason this happens, this, this matters here, is because in organizations, we find that processors tend to get disenfranchised a lot. Um, group meetings, processors get disenfranchised. Um, we're going to be talking about that on day five when we talk about meetings. Um, there's ways to honor the processors better because about half of us are processors. Okay? Here's why it matters here. When you're in a meet a one-on-one -on -one and your boss says to you, hey, uh, what would you like to see less of or more from me as a manager? Okay? Your processors are going to have a lot of really good things to say tonight, but not right now. And so it's a disenfranchisement right there. And so you, if you're going to ask certain kinds of questions, please give your people a, a chance to process it. And how might you do that? How might you preload a question? Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say just maybe say, well, if you can't answer this right now, why don't we just meet, you know, a couple days from now and we can talk about Yeah, in fact, let's, let's, let's go with that. How about at the end of your one-on-one, -on -one, just say, hey, at our next one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to be asking all the employees for some feedback about me. Would you be thinking about what I do well and what I don't do so well? So there's a preload, right? What's another way to preload if you don't want to go that far ahead? A note ahead of time. A note ahead? You might say, especially if you're asking the same sort of question. For example, you might be asking all your employees about some process improvement stuff. You might be asking them about some customer service issues, or you might be asking for feedback for you or about your meetings or whatever. Just let them all know, hey, this round of one-on-ones, I'm curious about X, Y, and Z, and what you guys can think so it's a really good way to not um, disenfranchise those, those processors. Let's avoid some common um, errors. Obviously, this is not a time for you to use most of the airtime. This is not a time for you to do most of the talking. Um, that's kind of an obvious one. One that's a little bit kind of, uh, by the way, all of these avoid some common errors have all come from, I think we add one of these. Melissa might correct me on this. I think we add one of these like every six months because it's because in our coaching, we see some of these, these mistakes and these errors. Um, number 11 in your top 15 management skills, you don't have to memorize it, but it does say, hold people accountable. Be cautious with this. 
if you haven't been doing one-on-ones, right, and now you're all of a sudden doing one-on-ones, what a horrible way to start your one-on-ones, right? Hey, here's our first one-on-one, here's where you're failing, right? Now you've just told them that one-on-ones, apparently, are gonna be a trip to the principal's office once a month, right? So no, if you haven't been doing them, don't start with this stuff. You'd save this stuff for other in-between conversations. Now, on the other hand, if you're doing one-on-ones and they're just a regular part of life now, it's a great time to have these conversations. Because now you get to avoid the whole come see me vibe. Because you're already seeing that person on a regular basis. So this is really just at the beginning. When you, ha when you haven't, been doing one haven't been doing one-on-ones, um, don't start with accountability. Add that, add that in when they're kind of rolling and a little bit more natural. A few more. Uh, don't cancel, reschedule. Um, and, and I don't mean this as hard and fast as it sounds, but what we do mean is you can see that one-on-ones have degenerated into something that they're not when you get this dynamic going on. The phone call to the employee, you know, 20 minutes before the one-on-one. Hey, I'm really busy. I know you are too. I have nothing for you. you have anything for you? No? Okay. But really? You have nothing for me? There's 15 management skills. You have nothing. You have no questions. You have no check-ins. Right? That says that you've now turned one-on-ones into very tasky conversations. So don't kind of willy-nilly cancel these things. Uh, last couple. These, again, these are mistakes you see, so that's why we're, we're listing them. Um, bring paper, not forms. Um, it's not uncommon for an organization to have an awkward first year of one-on-ones, have a smoother second year, and the third year it really clicks. That's not uncommon. But we've seen during that third year of clickage, um, we've seen some groups become really creative and say, hey, let's um, organize these one-on-ones and let's create a form. <laughs> and all the managers will go to the one-on-ones with a form and go through it and then have the manager and the employee sign it. Completely took away the spirit of what yeah. these were, right? It just, it, I mean, and what's sad about when we've seen this is it's almost always when it's actually clicking finally that they go too far. And they want to sort of institutionalize it now and make it less relational. They don't mean to make it less relational, but that's kind of what it turns into. On the other hand, bring paper. Why, why are you bringing paper? Or something, right? right? I mean, you just ask them what their training needs are. You're not writing that down? That doesn't look very sincere. And then lastly, um, say general information distribution for meetings. So what we mean by this is group meetings, Melissa. Group meetings, sorry, my bad. Um, now, these are for, uh, I've got information for my entire group, right? My entire team. What's the problem when I start parsing that out one person at a time? Not the, same message. the message changes. The Where timing is off. Mm -hmm. Why did she hear about it and I didn't hear about it? Word of mouth. They're hearing it from each other now. Messy, messy, messy. Right? Well,